my wife has truly done something so unforgiving. A lot of people are instantly going to think, oh, she must have cheated on you. No, she's never cheated on me. But what she has done, it's going to make me divorce her. Because I cannot be with a woman like this. I can't believe I spent so much time with her. I found it. My son's college tuition was not paid because of my wife's carelessness. Ugh, crazy story. I think that I'm marrying one of the most stupid human beings on the planet. I think that I'm also stupid for the fact that I married her. The fact that she's been able to hide this part of her personality for years is shocking, to say the least. Maybe it has to do with the fact that, for all these years, I was so generous towards her. I was making quite a lot of money, and it gave her all that she wanted, needed, desired... She never seemed to be as greedy as some people that I've seen. I have friends who have gone into bankruptcy due to having partners that overspent. My wife has never been that kind of person. She's always seemed to have her head glued on straight. This is why it shocks me to the core my son was unable to start college because there was nothing in his college fund. Imagine how embarrassed he felt when he had to be turned away because his fees were just not paid. He had money in his college fund as far as I knew. He had more than enough money to finish a college degree and do more with it if he wanted. I've always wanted my son to have the best education and to be able to do whatever his heart desired, after all. But now I've found out that this dream is in jeopardy, and at the worst time possible as well, when there's not much that I can do to help him. That is due to the company I work for going through a rough time, so I have had to just take a significant pay cut. In addition to that, I've had to work out of town for weeks, barely seeing much of my family at all, and I'm constantly stressed because we're trying to save the company, but it's not looking good for anybody right now. This last thing that I need to worry about is my son not being able to start college with his peers. All of this is his mother's fault. Do you know what makes it even worse? The fact that she's aged to tell me that there's no more money. She could have told me forever. Instead, she decides to keep quiet and um, just hope for the best. She did not even have the nerve to tell me that she used up all the money so that I could make a plan, and I'm fuming right now. The trust is broken, and I cannot even look her in the eyes. She's been blowing up my phone and trying to explain, but I don't want to hear a word from her. She's blaming her sister for making her spend all the money. She said that when her sister came back in town, she was going through a lot. She was lonely because I was always working and out of town, and her sister, who was a pretty good life, and is engaged to the owner of a record label, then came in town to cheer her up. At first, she spent the money that she had, and they went shopping and bought expensive things, and then dined in expensive places, and she felt pressure, since she did not have as much money as her sister, so she did not tell her when she was running out of money. When I came back home, I've always given her money to spend but soon that money was simply not enough. To make matters worse, her sister invited her for week-long getaways to a private island. Everything was going to be first class, of course, but Diane could not afford it. Instead of saying that she could not make it, she decided that she was just too deep, and she went. She used the money that was in our son's college fund to finance her trip. While she was only gone for a week, she spent thousands of dollars on clothing and food. She then said that she was also paying for her sister because her sister's fiancé had stopped paying for her. When she realized the funds were going low, she had no choice but to let her sister know, and instead of Irene telling her sister to stop spending the money and come out clean to me, she told her that her cover could not be blown. She did not want to be embarrassed in front of all her rich friends, and she told my wife that she would get the money back to her as soon as they got off the island, and she just needed to twist her fiancé's arm for a bit for cash. They were both so high on the buzz of their friends admiring them that they simply did not care. And then they came back and I was none the wiser. Since both of us have had access to our account, I could have seen the notifications. So she was smart enough to block the notifications on the phone, so I was none the wiser. I was losing sleep, stressing about what would happen if I lost my job and had to start over at a new company while they were busy partying with their friends. How disrespectful was that? As you can guess, her sister was not able to get her the money, so now she was stressed. And I remember that those days leading to my son leaving for college was restless days for her. 
I thought she was just sad and was going to miss Aiden, but I was dead wrong. She was the one who was responsible for everything that had to do with him being enrolled since she was the more present parent, and on the day that he left, I sacrificed a day of work and drove him there. Everything went so smooth, until he called me the next morning to let me know that he was being sent back because his fees were unpaid. Hmm, that's strange. We paid. I was on the phone with the college for a long time, trying to get to the bottom of this. They confirmed that the payment was never made, and my wife kept on telling them that she would pay soon, but she simply never did. I got off the phone with them and went to confront my wife. She started to have an absolute panic attack when I told her that our son was being sent back. I told her to tell me what she did with the money. She started to cry. She then told me the full story of what happened, and I told her to call her sister and tell her that I want the money right now. I did not care where she got it, but she was not going to take my son's future. I was completely disgusted by their lack of regard for anyone other than themselves. This was not the woman that I married, not the woman that I fell in love with. I knew it had to be Irene who influenced her like this. Everyone knows that Irene is a bit wild. She left the country about two years ago, and we did not hear about her afterward. Everybody was relieved because she was always getting caught up in stuff and stressing her poor parents. Her mother and father had now gotten to the point where they don't even want to see her. This is why I struggled to understand why my wife would get involved with her knowing that she's only trouble. She's been crying and telling me that it was a mistake and that she was lonely. If she was bored, then she should have gotten a job. I've never asked her to contribute to the house financially. I've allowed her to do what she wants and with her own time and provided her with a comfortable life. But of course, of course, she decides to just let temporary pleasure get in the way of, well, everything. So now my son is on his way back home and now I have to figure this out and well, she has to figure this out too because there's something that she did not know about that money. The money that she spent did not belong to me. It belonged to her dad. Now, I want to see how she'll be able to explain this to him. Her dad is a no-nonsense person, and he does not take betrayal very well. Even when she was growing up, he was the one to deal with harsh punishments when his kids misbehaved. My wife is scared of her dad. I mean, everyone is. If she's scared now, then imagine how she'll feel when she finds this out. I'm not going to cover for her. I'm going to tell him exactly what she did and let him deal with her. I think that it's only fair. I mean, I don't owe her any loyalty. Update number one. As you can imagine, it did not go very well when my wife and her sister found out exactly what they've done. The one who suffered the least shock was my sister-in-law. At least my wife was sorry, and she said that she's gotten out of control. My sister-in-law, on the other hand, was not sorry at all. She told me that she did not owe me anything and was not going to give me a dollar. She then said her sister deserved to spend the money and have a good time because I did not allow her to. I was taken back and asked what she meant by that, and she then said that I married her sister when she was barely out of high school and did not allow her to enjoy her twenties. I reminded her that her sister was pregnant and both parents and hers wanted to get married. We both had to take a year off from college and then continued because we had Aiden. Even though I never got to experience my bachelor years, I accepted that and I've never gone behind her back and tried to experience things. When my wife and I want to do anything, we do it together. We always make sure to take a couple of trips and see different places around the world at least once a year and I know it's not as awesome and expensive as her sister made her experience, but it is within my means. My sister-in-law then told me that my son could join, you know, just take the year off while I worked. I then asked my wife if this was how she was going to talk to me, and she then said that this whole thing made her realize that she got married far too young, and now she wants a divorce. I was shocked. So after spending all that money, she wants to leave, huh? So I told her that she could leave, but better be prepared to find a job because her father was going to want his money. Both of their jaws dropped to the floor when I told them who the money belonged to. They exchanged looks and could tell that they knew that they've messed up. Drop a bombshell on me and I'll do the same to you. 
My wife looked like she was about to faint for the tenth time that week, and I told them that they both had to leave. I wanted to remain with my son, and Irene said that I could not just kick my wife out. I mean, where would she go? I then asked her if she did not have a place to stay. She turned red when she said that she was kind of in between places, and that's when my wife doubled over and lost her lunch. She starts to breathe very heavy after that, and I could tell that she was having a panic attack. So her sister calmed her down while she had some water. Just then, I heard my son downstairs shouting that his grandparents were here, and her eyes rolled to the back of her head, and she literally fainted. Update number two. If there's anything that I fear, it's that my wife and her sister. I mean, those two get up to the most theatrics I've ever seen. I have no idea how all these years she was able to get away with her uh, dealing with her sister, but she has been. Unfortunately for them, that time has come for them to be exposed. All of the lies that they've told over the months are now spilling out and they have nowhere to look. Her father and mother came to visit us randomly. And they stay way out of town and we've not seen them in ages. I went downstairs to go and greet them while Irene dealt with Diane, and my father-in-law said that he was in town for business and thought to visit the family. He was shocked to find Aiden still home, so I changed the topic to something else. Since he was here, I knew it was my chance to tell him, and I knew that he was not going to be happy. He's not a man who believes in handouts, and he's never done that for any of his kids. When he gave me Aiden's college fund, he made me promise that the money would not be used for anything else, otherwise I would be on the chopping block. I've had times when I needed money desperately, but I've never touched that money no matter what. So I knew that if he found out that his grandson was not going to go to college, he was not going to be very happy. Well, I asked my son to make something to eat for them and told my father-in-law that we need to go to the study to speak about something urgent. I told him everything, leaving out nothing, and as you can imagine, he was furious, as I expected, and he told me that he was going to write a replacement check for his grandson, and Aiden did not need to be punished for his mother's deeds. He then said that my wife and her sister were going to have no choice but to work hard for that money. If they did not, then they would face some very harsh consequences. He then said that he would talk to them when my wife came downstairs. That's when we heard a shout from my sister-in-law telling us that we need to call the ambulance. So we called the ambulance and we all ended up at the hospital with my wife. I was shocked by her reaction to getting caught. She was being a tad bit too dramatic. Soon enough, the doctor came out and told us, well, what was up with my wife? She said that my wife was actually experiencing these symptoms because she was pregnant. Now it was my turn to feel faint. I could tell that even my father-in-law was not expecting this news. At her age, we've given up the idea of having more kids. One was more than enough, and her sister, on the other hand, was over the moon, and even had the audacity to say to me that she was happy for me. This was the very same woman who supported her sister when she said that she was going to divorce me. This was all uh, a little too much for me. I did not want to look Diane in the eye. So... When everybody went to see her, I remained. Right when I was coming to accept the fact that we might be done for good, she had to do this. It was like she was doing this on purpose so that she could escape punishment. And We left her at the hospital and then her father and Irene went to the study where they talked for a long time. When they came back, he called me in and told me what was going to happen. My sister-in-law was going to have no choice but to work off the money that she owed him. He was going to take her passport and have her restricted from leaving the country until she paid off the money. My wife was also going to help her, but only after she gave birth. I told him that it was okay if, well, that was what he wanted to do, but I was not sure that I wanted to still be with her. He then told me that divorce was not really a thing in the family, especially now that there's a second child on the way. So, I'm now trapped with this woman that I do not trust. At least her sister's going to be working hard to pay off the money and will not be able to leave the country. It's not the best outcome. I would have wished him to do something a bit more. The two of them are disrespectful to have a mockery of this kindness in mind, too. And Diane's so lucky that she's pregnant because she's going to get to escape her punishment for now. But don't you worry, the months are going to rush and soon she'll have to work. 
She's not worked for anything in years, so I'm sure that it's not going to be fun for her, and I'm sure that she's loved spending the money, but now she'll have to work for it. Other than that, seems like this matter is over. I will never be able to look at her the same way. I question whether I even still love her. But it's all good. I'm just going to clean out the guest room so that I can sleep there. There's uh, no such thing as marriage between us anymore. That I can assure you. Update number three. Five months later. Well, for five months, I've been taking care of Diane. Every time that she has a craving, I'm the one who has to take care of it. Every time she needs to go to the doctor, I'm the one who has to do it. I've been working so hard at work, too, as the company's recovering. Besides all of that, I've not had a single moment to myself. My life has been feeling like I'm a zombie and I'm trapped in this nightmare. I've resigned myself to the fact that things will not change. I'm stuck with this woman in this marriage without trust. But my luck has changed. I'm relieved to know that I'm no longer responsible for any of that, and I'm about to be a free man and I cannot wait. It does not matter whether father said that woman is out of my home. I can't believe that she made me a slave after her for months while she was carrying somebody else's baby. Some man showed up at the doorstep and said that he was the father of the baby, and apparently they met on a week on that island. <laughs> He said that her sister told him about it when he came into town because she was drunk. So he wanted to confirm if it, well, he is the baby's father. Funny thing, this man has always wanted to be a dad, but never could have been one. She was so embarrassed to try to deny it, but then he requested a DNA test, and then she said that she was tired of lying, and it was the truth. She's been trying so hard to hide it, so I told her to leave. I was not going to stay with somebody who well, was pregnant with another man's baby. I don't care what her father says or does, even if he cuts off the funding for my son's school. I'll take care of my son. I'm tired of being trapped in this marriage. It's a sham. It's not even a marriage at this point, and I'm going to call her father tomorrow and tell him what I've discovered. If he dares to try to force me to stay with her, then I'll let this secret out, and I will ugh, not let it be so good for him. I still cannot believe that Irene would snitch on her sister like that. I guess she was very mad because of the fact that she's stuck here, working for her father. The last time I saw her, she looked worn out and depressed. Just to be petty, I asked her how her engagement was coming along, and she gave me the finger. What? She deserves a lot more than just petty comments after what she did. If that had been my money, then I would have probably never gotten it back. Update number four. How the mighty have fallen. It's quite sad to see, to be honest with you. Diane might have thought that being pregnant was going to save her from her father's wrath after what she did, but she had no idea the hell that she was going to go through. Firstly, our son decided to cut her off when he heard that she cheated on me. She tried to get him first by going to his college to explain. As soon as she told him what she had done, he told her that she was no longer his mother and she needed to leave. He blocked her on everything and refused to even mention her name. Her father, on the other hand, apologized to me profusely and begged me to take her back. He said that such a scandal would ruin the family name. I told him that I've put up with enough from her. I cannot do this anymore. So then he said that there's nothing much that he could do but disown her. She would be the problem of the guy who made her pregnant. So he officially cut her off and removed her from the will. As a favor to me, he made sure our divorce was quick. As long as I shut my mouth about the reason we divorced. And whatever, I'm okay with that, considering the fact that he also gave me a lump sum to make up for the inconvenience. He said that even after she gave birth, she would uh, still have to work all the money off that she owed him. And he was going to treat her like any regular person who owed money to him. She did not take it well at all. She tried to stop our divorce, but there were no grounds to her to do it. And then she started to blame Irene for all that happened. She refused to take accountability for the fact that she stepped out of her marriage. And her argument to me was that Irene came back looking all fabulous and telling her about her awesome life. She then got sucked into it and wanted to live such a luxurious lifestyle. And in doing so... She messed up something that was so good. I told her that the only reason I did not wish I'd never met her was our son. 
I should have divorced her and not been so scared of my father-in-law when this marriage started to be like a full-time job. Instead, I tried to stay, you know, for our son. Never once did I give in to the temptation of cheating, even though I could have, and I just told myself that I was a family man every single time I felt like quitting. Now I see that I should have left her and found someone else, and surely there was someone else who would have treated me better, and at least now that we are divorced, I'm not responsible for picking up her mess. Now it's the problem of the guy who got her pregnant. Update number five. Final update of the story. Well, things started to look up for us after we abandoned her. That is what she led us to think, and she started living with the guy who got her pregnant, who turned out to be a well-off man from a pretty wealthy family. She got engaged to him and got him to pay the debt that she had, and I was not happy that she just easily got out of it like that. And neither was her sister. Irene was raging, and she still had a few more years to pay off the debt. She made sure that everyone knew that she resented her sister for always having better luck in this lifetime. I did not really care if the guy married her or not. She would be his problem. At least he could afford to take care of her, but when it came to her son, she completely lost him. She gave birth to a baby girl and announced that she was soon to be wedded. Can you imagine that she sent invitations to all of us, even though we had absolutely disowned her? Her father called me and told me just how much he disapproved of what she was doing, and he said that she had already broken his trust once and he did not want to participate in anything that, well, had to do with her life forever. I sent her a message telling her that first of all, I would need to bring a plus one since I was dating someone from the office. And I then said secondly, I wanted to stay out of drama and did not want to bring my new girlfriend to my ex-wife's wedding. She then responded that I was being petty for no reason at all. What happened between us in the past was truly in the past. I told her that she should leave me alone and focus on her baby. I was seriously getting annoyed with how much she called and texted and just talking about what happened. And for somebody who was getting married, she was having a hard time moving on. The only person who agreed to go to her wedding was Irene, who was always a bit of a wild card. About two months went by before the wedding day came. I heard about what happened through rumors. and It was all over town. Everybody was laughing at her due to the embarrassment that she faced with her own wedding, and her groom did not show up. Instead, he left the country with the baby. He could not face even getting arrested since it appeared that she had signed the rights of the baby to him. When she realized that he was not coming and she could not get a hold of the babysitter, she had an absolute mental breakdown. Her sister was ready to make it even worse for her. She laughed and said that she had helped him get her to sign over the rights to the baby. She had pretended to want to reconcile with her sister and then tricked her into signing the papers for a bit of spare change. That was when the cat fight broke out. Of course, somebody took a video of it. <laughs> Nobody really put any effort into stopping it, and by the time they finished scrapping, they both looked terrible. Diane was busy calling her sister all sorts of names and saying that she was the one who caused her to lose a happy family. Well, Irene, on the other hand, told her that she was the one who chose to have a fast life, and then Diane tried to throw a glass at her sister saying that she was the reason that she started spending money that she did not have, and it was very interesting seeing their solidarity fully crumble. What did they think? That they could make fools of people and live happy lives? And Diane lost it after realizing that her baby was gone and that there was not much that she could do about it. She did not have money of her own to even leave the country or pay a lawyer to help get her baby back. Her parents got a call one day in the middle of the night when she was in the hospital due to alcohol poisoning. She's been drinking for over five days and mixing it with medication. They were able to help her, but it was determined that it, well, she's at a risk. She was likely continuing to suffer from depression and PTSD due to the gravity of all that she went through over the past year. Her parents decide to have her admitted to a mental health facility until she can get better. She's still there, and I've not gone to see her, of course. Our son's not once even asked about his mom, and he's truly done with her, and you know what? That's pretty sad. She threw all of us away for absolutely nothing, and she's worse off now than she ever was. 
The person who made her do this is roaming the streets now, enjoying her life, but I just know that one day Irene's going to get what's truly coming towards her. Right now, she thinks that she's invincible because she did not lose that much. Wait till she gains something that she loves and loses it. Oh, that's going to teach her humanity. I'm not sure her sister can attest to it. Let this be a lesson to anyone out there who thinks about getting temporary happiness. Think about how high the stakes are and what you can lose if you continue with it. And if you can lose it, great. No, do it. But if you can't, you better not. You'll end up like Diane and Irene, lost in this world. As for myself, I've decided to carry on and erase her from my memory. Right now, I'm focused on Caroline. You might think it's too soon for me to hop into a relationship because I was married for so long, but oh, Caroline has healed my heart in a way that I never saw possible. I truly believe that it will last. All right, so let's just go ahead and talk about how Diane's life completely spiraled out of control and landed her in a mental health facility. I mean, it was just one thing after the other. Eventually, she finds a new dude who runs away with their baby. Grandpa gets involved, OP gets involved, and they say enough is enough. You're going to get your mental health evaluated. We're sending you to a facility. I want to know what you guys think about this story, what you would have done if you were in OP's position, and you find out everything that well, went down, went down. Let's talk about it downstairs in the comment section, guys. If you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day. So if you're into the animated dramatic stories, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. And just remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.